Newton's law is over 300 years old. So what could be difficult about a practical involving Newton's second law? Well, let's find out. Now the setup is key for this practical. Uh, we've got a car on a slope and we've got something called a pulley, which is um, just guiding the string over the edge of the table. Um, and we have some masses and a mass hanger at the end. Okay, now what we're going to try and do is uh, using Newton's second law, which is F equals MA, we are going to vary the force. Now how we're going to do that is put masses on the end of the hanger. Don't be confused, we're not changing the mass where we are, but we're using that to change the force. How do we find the acceleration of the car? This is a really tricky bit, okay? So the definition for acceleration is change in velocity divided by time, or rate of change of velocity. So we've got to find a way of measuring the time and the change in velocity before we can find our acceleration. Now, hopefully it's obvious that the one easy thing to measure there is the time. We can use a stop clock for that, or a stopwatch. So we need one person with a stopwatch measuring the car's journey over the period of time. Now to measure the velocity, um, there will be some new equipment where this is really the only point it comes up in the GCSE. Um, use plenty A level, um, but they're called light gates. Okay, and there's different types. Uh, they're essentially kind of like speed cameras. Um, they use lasers to measure the velocity of the car. They can also be used to measure acceleration, um, but uh, we're going to use them to measure velocity here. So these light gates measure the velocity at one point, then at another point. And we can find the change and divide that by the time to find the acceleration. So how would a method look then? So first things first, we've got the car up the slope. We are going to release the car from a fixed point on a slope. All good so far. Part two, um, what are we gonna measure? So we are gonna measure those two things. We're gonna measure the time taken um, between uh, to reach uh, the bottom um, using a stopwatch. Okay, now um, the slightly tricky one is we're gonna measure the change in velocity. Now the change in velocity um, we are gonna measure between two points. Now those two points are the two light gates you see in the diagram, which um, you might have noticed means that stage two is slightly incorrect. So we're gonna measure the change in velocity between two points using the light gates. So instead of the stop clock being used to measure the time taken for the car to reach the bottom, actually that's incorrect, deliberately incorrect. What we should say then is that it's the time taken for the car to get between those two light gates, because otherwise you're measuring different distances, which is not a fair calculation or fair comparison. So the time taken between two points using a stopwatch and the change of velocity between two points using light gates. Make sure you mention that when you're describing a method. Okay, this is the easy bit because we've already got it written down. We're going to use the equation acceleration equals change in velocity divided by time to calculate the acceleration. Next um, is we're going to vary the force. So to do that, we are adding masses to the end of the string from the car. And then we repeat. So we add another one, another one, and repeat, we repeat parts one, two, three, and four. Now, when I say from the car, what I mean is uh, the total mass of the system has to be constant. So you take a mass off the car and you put it to the end of the mass hanger. Um, so otherwise, you're changing the mass of the whole thing as well as the force, which we don't want to do. That's quite a tricky thing uh, to do, uh, even when you're doing it practically with the equipment. Okay, so what kind of results are we expecting? So let's say we vary the force in 0.1 newtons each time. We don't need much force here to uh, change the acceleration. Uh, let's say we have these values for acceleration. So if the mass is constant, um, what we'd expect to find is that the more force you add, the more the acceleration, um, and you'll get a nice straight line uh, through the origin. So a nice straight line through the origin. As one variable doubles, the other doubles. You can see force doubles, acceleration pretty much doubles, um, meaning that magic two words, they are in direct proportion with each other. Okay, so you can either mention that with the graph or with the results. Either one gives you a direct proportionality. Okay, now there is another version of this practical um, which doesn't involve direct proportionality, uh, which is slightly trickier um, to do and trickier to ask about, but we're gonna obviously uh, tackle it as well. So if the force was constant on the car uh, and the question asked you about how would the mass affect the acceleration, what you would um, do is instead of changing the mass on the pulley, 
you change the mass on the car. Okay, so changing the mass on the car, making the car heavier and heavier and heavier each time, not the force on the end. Now, um, changing the mass, you might be able to guess, like with a lorry, um, it's harder to speed up or accelerate. Okay, so actually an increase in mass makes the acceleration decrease. So like this, in a curve. Now, this relationship, um, that special type of curve is called inversely proportion or inverse proportionality. Okay, so what it means is that one variable doubles, the other halves. So if I doubled the mass, the acceleration would half. Okay, so you also find this in other parts of physics an inversely proportional relationship. Now, everything else about the practical is the same setup, etc., just what you're changing. Okay, accuracy. Um, regardless of what the independent and dependent variables are, um, control variables are absolutely vital in this practical. So you've got to have the same slope angle uh, for the whole practical. You can't change the angle uh, at all. You've got to make the same distance between light gates as well. Otherwise, um, again, it won't be a fair comparison. Um, don't say things like the car for control variables because it's kind of obvious you're going to keep the car the same throughout. That's not going to change. Uh, for safety, um, have someone or something catching the car at the end of uh, the slope, um, and that should be all that.